It was hilarious. There was maximum eight of them total. Uh, I was actually walking up and down the hallway waiting for it to start, and I turned my back, and there was Nick Ricada. Gave him a big handshake, big hug. Mrs. Ricada, who I sat next to in court in the front row, actually, um, gave him another hug and handshake on the way out. Uh, from my reading of what happened, and I so they didn't have a hearing on whether the trial should be televised. Uh, I guess that'll happen at another point. I'm not sure. One definite Kiwi farmer, 325 pounds, long ass beard, completely unkempt. Uh, there was another nanny there who was wearing a tweed jacket who was taking notes like they were Hunter S. Thompson, uh, which I was thought I thought was pretty funny. Anybody with a notepad there was there on behalf of Kiwi Farms. There's no other reason. Maybe one local reporter, you could say, but it was a strange bunch, so I, I don't think any local reporters were there. Uh, one black guy who, who definitely acknowledged himself as a Kiwi farmer, because I said, tell Josh what's up. Uh, when he was leaving, he said, tell Nick Fuentes what was up, which I thought was strange. But he identified himself as a Kiwi farmer with that. He played it cool up until that very point when I yelled at him when he left. A um, couple more, maybe like... I don't know, six or seven possible. There were 19 people in the gallery uh, with me and the uh, deputies uh, in the gallery part. And then uh, Ricada's people came in. Mrs. Ricada sat right next to me, actually, in the front row. And so um, I guess there was maybe like, I was told that it would hold 30 people, but um, I don't really think so. I don't think they will hold 30 people, but um, yeah, I was seated in the front row right next to Miss Ricada. She was very nice and it was good, it was good to see her. Um, one normal looking guy, one normal looking guy with the whole Kiwi bunch, blue long sleeve, khakis, nice shoes. I'm still thinking he was a plant, but he, he looked the, less, the least like a plant, I guess you could say. Um, walking the hall, I was walking the hall the whole time uh, intimidating these Kiwi farm freaks. So I was walking past them the whole time. And then when I walked down to the end and turned around, Nick Ricardo was standing by, uh, behind me, uh, along with his wife. And, uh, you know, I shook hands, gave him a hug, gave his wife, a, gave his wife a hug. Uh, and so, you know, it was about 45 minutes before the thing started. And then another 15, once we got into the courtroom, and so the, the tranny seemed really concerned with taking notes on me. So we'll probably see a huge effort post from them on Kiwi Farms pretty, pretty fast. Uh, I'd have to say ugly fat bitch in horizontal black stripes with, with, with teal sleeves furiously taking notes. This is still when we're outside the court, by the way. Fat guy with pen in his mouth shaking, shaking as he puts his pad in his pocket. I noticed that he was, sh his hands were shaking as he put his pad in his pocket. Um, Ricada gray suit, purple tie, looking dapper. Uh, Mrs. Ricada had a nice, you know, demure blouse on, long sleeve. Um, I don't know what you call that, camisole or something on top of it. Uh, a little lace at the end, but nothing, you know, too racy, anything like that. I thought she was very demure uh, in what she was wearing. And of course she ended up sitting next to me. This was me taking notes beforehand. Uh, even, but um, let's see. I'm looking. Um, so, Ricada and I believe Nick's mom or her mom, one, were sitting right next to me in the front row. Um, I think she said it was Nick's mom actually, but uh, that will have to be. He can go over that, but I, I, that's what I heard earlier on. Uh, so they were sitting right right next to me, and the whole the whole rest of the gallery were filled with Kiwi Farms freaks. So it was me, uh, Mrs. Ricada, uh, Nick's mom is who she said, is what I heard, it may, maybe it's her mom, one of them's moms, uh, were sitting right next to me. So it was the mom, Mrs. Ricada, me, front three in the front row. So uh, let's go through the actual trial. Uh, let's see. Uh, motion to suppress filed on Sunday. Motion to pr pr uh, suppress the, the search warrant was filed on Sunday uh, by Nick Ricada's lawyer. Uh, he said both legs, Detective Pomplin, his base his motion on were faulty. Warrant based on hearsay from a reporting official 
that CPS initially rejected this report. CPS, the 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 you know the report from the church, the pastor. CPS had originally said there was nothing there, and they dismissed that report. Well, one of the legs of his warrant is based on a report that was dismissed by CPS beforehand. So that was one of his challenges there. Two, based on Aaron M. Holt as a concerned citizen. And the lawyer pointed out that Aaron M. Holt's not a concerned citizen. He has a long-time grudge against Nick Ricada, and so you can't classify him as just a concerned citizen. Uh, he has a long-time grudge against Ricada. And this is how he presented it to the judge in his filings. Concerned citizen Aaron M. Holt. He cited a CPS report that had already been debunked by CPS themselves. Uh, and the video that he based his warrant on was based on Cog's channel, which was heavily edited, had Cog's logo on it. It wasn't the original source, but he portrayed to the judge that he had watched Nick Ricada's original stream, which he had not. So there are three bad apples in his application for a search warrant, three separate ones. So one is the faulty CPS report that was already thrown out. Two is that he based Aaron Imhold as an, a concerned citizen when he's a blood enemy, right? Uh, and so, and they can't even show which day Imhold showed this stream, by the way. They couldn't even cite it in court. The prosecutor was totally befuddled. Uh, and three, he represented to the judge that he watched Nick Ricada's original stream, which he did not, and he admitted later on. So the lawyer for Ricada speculated that Perhaps the judge wouldn't have signed in four minutes, by the way, the judge signed the warrant. Perhaps the judge would, you know, the judge has an expectation that the law enforcement are going to tell them the truth. Perhaps this judge wouldn't have signed this warrant in four minutes if she had had that information. Uh, so that's the basis of the challenge uh, to the search warrant. Uh, Cog added elements. Uh, Ricada's lawyer said he believes the warrant wouldn't have been signed had the judge known all this. Um... April's statement on body cam, they said they will not use body cam footage unless April testifies, uh, is what was said. Um, and so th they wouldn't say they wouldn't use body cam footage uh, whatsoever, but unless she testifies, it's looking like the body cam footage might be, uh, uh, you know, DOA, but we'll see uh, if some of it gets out. But uh, I, I wouldn't, I have no inside knowledge, by the way, but I wouldn't expect her to testify in the first place. Um, prosecutor, <laughs> I, I audibly chuckle as he says, still toe, morning toe. <laughs> and then I caught myself because he said, still toe, morning toe. And I said, <laughs> and I started laughing because I thought that was amusing. Um, prosecutor says she can't authenticate still, co still toe radio evidence, uh, shows uh, that shows there was animosity between the two parties, not a concerned citizen. She can't even authenticate what day, what program, what was said. Uh, prosecutor won't respond in court uh, to what Ricada's lawyer said and asked until August 30th for a written response. And then Ricada's lawyer asked for a rebuttal, basically, for five more days. And the judge says, well, typically, you know, this is your motion right here. But since I'm giving her till July 30th to write a written response when really she should have to respond right here. I'll give you five extra days to, to give another written response. Um, and I believe September 6th uh, is the deadline. Sept September 5th or 6th uh, is the deadline for further motions. Uh, but that's all that happened today, uh, actually. And so um, that was my on-the-spot reporting prosecution seems kind of lost the warrant you know whether they throw it out or not is looking dodgy and so that was my on the scene uh, coverage and you guys can take it uh, or leave it but uh, you know two, three separate legs of the warrant is based on bullshit the, the lawyer said he saw the original copy of Ricada's stream he didn't he acted like M. Holt was a concerned citizen instead of an involved party, of an involved hater. He didn't tell the judge that at all. And he threw in a CPS report from the 
pastor that had already been debunked by CBS, uh, CB, CPS, and they refused to follow up on it because they said it was bullshit. So three different prongs of his application for the search warrant were bullshit. So we'll see, you know, what ends up happening, but that's what I learned today in court. And, um, you know, it was a little ho-hum affair, maybe worth coming out, maybe worth not, but I figured... Uh, I figured that I would uh, just because those two are, and I have some, I have some footage of them running away like the cowards they are that I'll post as well. But that's my update. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go eat, have a little fun.